Hey there, it's Mahdi. Welcome to the ML Boost channel, where we uncover the insights and techniques in the field of machine learning. In this video, we will kick off our first playlist dedicated to the exciting topic of time series forecasting. We will delve into one of the key concepts in the field and provide you with a strong foundation to take your forecasting skills to the next level. Whether you are new to forecasting or an experienced professional, you won't want to miss this. So sit back, relax, and get ready to boost your knowledge of machine learning and forecasting. Let's first define a simple univariate forecasting problem. Imagine that our variable of interest is V sub T. We have the past L values of the variable as a vector of length L and we want to forecast its next H values as a vector of length H. We want to learn about reliable time series forecasting. The emphasis is on reliability. What that means is that we are looking for forecasts that you can rely on to make high impact decisions. Something more than a low test score to win a forecasting competition. Reliability has different elements which we will discuss in this video and the ones that will follow. The first element in assessing the reliability of any forecasting method is its performance on unseen data, which should be measured by a proper error metric. The most common one is the mean absolute percentage error or MAPE. If you are interested to know more about the history of MAPE and why it has become the most common error metric it is today, feel free to look at this paper. This is the definition of MAPE, where V hat and V represent the forecasted and actual values. T is the time at which we perform the forecast, and I is a time index in the forecasting horizon. So we have a summation over different points in the horizon. First of all, you can see that the actual value appears in the denominator, which means that if there is a point with actual value equal to zero, then MAPE is not defined. Second, you can view MAPE as a weighted sum of absolute errors, where the weight of each point is inversely proportional to the actual value at that point. What this means is that the lower the actual value at a point, the higher that point's contribution to MAPE. For example, points with actual values close to zero will have a significantly higher impact on MAPE, and one should be careful in including them in the summation. To see what kind of problems this can create, let me propose a question. Let's say that our true values follow this line and we have two models, model A that makes the green forecasts and model B that makes the red forecasts. The question is, which model do you think has better forecasts and which one will have a lower map? Feel free to stop the video to think about the question before continuing. In the example, the true values following the blue line are from this equation. The first model, model A, performs the green predictions using this relation. These predictions result in a MAPE of 38%. The second model, model B, performs the red predictions using this equation. Obviously, model A performs a much better job at points t equal to 1 and 2. However, model B performs better at point t equal to 0, but because the true value at t equal to 0 is much lower than the true values at the two other points, point t equal to 0 gets a much higher weight in the overall MAPE, making the MAPE of model B lower than model A, even though model A performs a much better job at points t equal to 1 and 2. This example shows that because in MAPE, the weight of each point is inversely proportional to the point's actual value, 
points with actual values close to zero, here p equal to zero, get a much higher weight, and that can create problems such as the one you see here, where a model that has better forecasts, model A here, ends up having a higher MIP than a model whose forecasts are not as good, model B here. The takeaway point is that if in your forecasting horizon, there are a few points whose actual values are much lower than the other points in the horizon, you should be careful in including them when you calculate the MAPE. Another problem with MAPE is that although it does not have units, its value can still change if you change the unit in which the time series is measured. Let's consider an example. Imagine that we want to forecast temperatures. The actual temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, but our forecast is 1 degrees higher, giving a MAP of 4%. If we change our measurement units from Celsius to Kelvin for the exact same actual and forecasted values, our MAP will be more than 10 times lower. Now, as an additional note, this problem will occur if you change from an interval scale, Celsius in our example, to a ratio scale, Kelvin here, or vice versa. If you would like to know more about these scales, comment below or see these books. The next point that I want to discuss about MAPE is that if you look at published papers, or resources, you often see the following phrase, or something similar to it. MAPE puts a heavier penalty on positive errors than on negative errors. Here are some of these papers, and you can find more if you Google Scholar search the phrase. One needs to be careful in interpreting this phrase, and here is why. First of all, if you look at the MAPE definition, it's very easy to see that because we are taking the absolute value in the numerator, we can state that for a given actual value, MAPE puts equal penalties on negative and positive errors. So what do those papers mean by the phrase? Let's say that we have a quantity whose actual value is 150 and our under forecasted value is 100, giving a MAPE of 33%. Now, if we swap the actual and forecasted values, the MAPE of the not over forecasted value will be higher simply because we are dividing the same absolute error with a lower actual value. So we can state that for a given amount of absolute error, the MAPE of an over-forecast will be higher than its under-forecast counterpart. And this is what is meant by the phrase in those papers. What are the implications of this? Let's see. You should avoid MAPE when the real-life cost of errors are determined by the absolute error only. And for a given amount of absolute error, that cost is lower when the error is due to over forecasting than when it's due to under forecasting. Let me give an example. Imagine we want to forecast the amount of an inventory item that we should order so that we can store it to later sell to clients. In this problem, the penalty for under forecasting is not realizing profits from missed sales. On the other hand, the penalty for over-forecasting is paying extra storage costs. Also, imagine that these costs depend only on the absolute error and not the actual value itself. For this problem, if the cost associated with storing one extra item is lower than missing the profit from selling such an item, then we should think about using metrics other than MIP and I will discuss some of these other metrics in the upcoming videos. Now that we have discussed MAPE, I would like to end this video by proposing a pause and ponder question. Let's review a time series forecasting problem 
associated with electric grid operation called load forecasting, which is to predict power utilization for a period of time in the future, for example, next 24 hours. The electric power utilization typically follows a pattern like this with hours of a day. It is important for us to get the daily peak values right. In other words, forecasting the local maxima accurately is more important than forecasting the local minima accurately. Here is a question for you to think about. What are the implications of using MAPE for this problem? If this interests you, feel free to comment below or message me with your thoughts. With that, thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider answering the following questions for me as video comments. Hope to see you next time.